Welcome to On The Chain. And, uh, but here, let's, let's look at this here. So a lot going on with Ripple. This one right here. And you know what? I have to say, I really like this. I'm not much of an emoji guy, but this speaker icon, I don't see that used much. Subtle, gray, I like it a lot. Um, introducing Clio um, version 1.0. Now this is an XRP Ledger API server, and the purpose is to enhance throughput for API requests, reduce the memory usage, lower storage overhead, and enable easier horizontal scaling. Review the documentation to run a Clio server. So this is kind of good. I mean, the, the whole point of this is to reduce that load and the memory if you're running a regular, um, if you're running Ripple on, on a server. And so this here, let me see, do I have the actual? That's pretty cool. It's really yeah, cool, it's, man. The API server. Well, it's good to have, um, you know, they get into a little bit more specifics here. So you basically reduce the load on a Rippled server. Rippled is the software that runs the XRPL. And we know from a story earlier we did that that finally has migrated from the GitHub account of Ripple over to the XRPL foundation, which is great because as it should be. And it's still going to be, it's open source and it's going to be maintained both by devs and Ripple and outside devs as well. And the Clio uh, server does not connect to the peer to peer network. It uses uh, gRPC to get validated data from one or more trusted Ripple servers that's connected to the P2P network. Lower mes me memory usage, storage overhead, uses Cassandra as a database and uh, horizontal scaling. Multiple Clio servers can have access to the same data set enables you to get a highly uh, available cluster of Clio servers. What does all that mean, Chip? What does that mean in English? Well, the horizontal scaling is a little bit, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's a, it's a performance. It's more about based around performance because they, because the multiple Clio servers have access to the same data versus, you know, like a, like a peer to peer, which is like a movement between one and two. Right. This one allows, because the whole idea is that it's, it's taken a lot of the, uh, the the overhead off of the actual server because it has access to all the XRPL data sets and all of the API, all the requests via an API. And that's also higher throughput for API requests. So the Clio server extracts validated data from one or more trusted Rippled servers, and then it stores the data uh, efficiently. What they've done is they've, they've effectively just created a brand new um, way to extract the load and use lower message it's just it's more efficient so pretty more cool efficient efficiency that's what's amazing with this you know protocol when we look at the xrpl and we look at what is possible you know and then you look at like with ethereum and they're still working on you know ethereum 2.0 right and it's uh, what are we 12 years in the in the rollout of 2.0 i don't know if we're that point. far but <laughs> it seems like it though I want to throw this up here real quick here, Jeff, just because uh, this is uh, Schwartz uh, basically said he was excited to announce the, re the release of Clio 1.0, which significantly improves the scalability, the access of the XRPL data. doesn't matter how quickly and cheaply the ledger can reach it finality. If you can't support massive numbers from queries from wallets, exchanges and explorers. So, you know, it's the scalability is really key here. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, Jeff. It's like, what is Ripple doing? What is their concern uh, that they're worried about, uh, that they want to make sure the scale is available? Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. They want to make sure, hmm. you know, it's like, hmm, let me see. They want to make sure the scale is available. So they're already looking down the road. Is there a reason they need to scale it? I mean, obviously they want, because he said it doesn't matter how many, how quickly and cheaply the ledger can reach finality. It's all about supporting the massive number of queries, not only from wallets, but exchanges and explorers. But I want to get to this story here. This Pierce's uh, technology doing some big things. Uh, you and I talked about another achievement, but they were said they put an announcement out yesterday. They're thrilled to announce that after a year of development with uh, what is this? Gob, uh, Gobinero Digital and uh, Mintero TIC, we launched the first national land registry on top of the XRPL for all Colombians. So the land registry in Colombia is built on the XRP ledger. What do you think about that, Jeff? Yeah, that's a that's an amazing start. You know, I think we're we're definitely moving in in a direction and there's some all, some other new technology that's rolling out through uh you know through the XRPL as well for those signatures. Um but for Columbia to do what they're doing, you know, to and, and to see well at least to start seeing that kind of uh 
rollout, you know, in Colombia. Not saying Colombia is embracing 100, percent but to have to have you know the the direction that we're seeing, you know, many uh, uh, countries or um, some of these companies, you know, moving in, we're kind of we're seeing a departure from um, just traditional. Uh, it, it's all about the crypto. It's all about uh, long term, you know, financial gain. To how can we now start implementing the technology uh, for real practical use today? Uh, you know, with within multiple industries. So I think that's that's one perfect one. You know, and, and we look at you know, whether it's the NFT space or the or the smart contracts, you know, there's so much more to it than just uh, a JPEG um, and the smart contracts so much more to it than just talking about it and saying, hey, Ethereum has, you know, smart contracts uh, or what we see rolling out with uh, within Flare. And we start seeing all of this technology. But how do we move from talking about the technology to actually seeing it in real world. And I think that's one example of real world use. Yeah, exactly. Kind of a, kind of a long way to say that, but. Yeah, it's a long way, but it's, uh, <laughs> but it, all, it always comes back. It's all good here. And so uh, what I'm trying to find here is uh, that product that they just were the same company, I'm trying yeah. to find it. XRP, it's called XRP Stamp. Here yeah, it's it really is. cool. And that that's a real world practical, you know, and, and this is where, you know, and I think, you know, at least I know for for, you know, you and I, because we've talked about a lot, you know, what is attractive about uh, the XRPO, what's attractive even about, you know, Ripple, even though we have no you know gain out of what Ripple does. Um, but to see them building in this in this blockchain uh, ecosystem and seeing what's possible utilizing the XRPL is you know it's kind of like setting the foundation uh for many other companies out there and we're starting to see that the xrp ledger is so powerful you know it, in terms of what they initially started with and to be able to continuously build on it and and keep making it better because you can't really forecast you know five years down the road or 10 years down the road every element of it um and then you're gonna have to be you know able to to change uh direction a little bit or adapt a direction a little bit uh, and add and one of and i think this is where we're seeing the stumbling block of ethereum or or bitcoin is that you know they can't make those subtle changes no right no, i mean not at all. it it is what it is it's fixed um and, and it has its purpose not to say again that it's bad that it's fixed but the xrpl it is so powerful there's so much to it and, yeah, and it's, that's, that's impressive and so I found this finally. So Pierce's, what we just talked about, and thanks to Crypto Eddie who, who tweeted something out about it yesterday. I was like, how do we miss this, Jeff? But, we, you know, we did. And so they said, hey, XRPL community, happy to share our latest product launch on the XRP Ledger for nice. data notarization. This is another big one. XRP Stamp is a free tool available on the XRPL. Hang on a second, Jeff. And it's a... It's mainnet and testnet to create blockchain certificates using the ZUM wallet, IPFS, and Ripple X Dev. And here it is right here. Here's the stamp. I and like it. It's this right here. Again, I mean, look at the ingenuity that's happening on the XRPL. Again, this is what happens when you have open source mm -hmm. and you know the XRPL. Nobody controls it. Everyone's like, Ripple doesn't control it. Yeah, they created it, it but it doesn't matter. It's open source and it's out there. And you've got these two major products by Pierce's uh, technologies and this one here, get your stamp to certify the important, get it global, decentralized above all. So you can basically verify um, a file and you, this, I don't know that it's legal quite yet, but it will be. So it's decentralized, it's built in the XRP ledger, first quality tech and high performance secure. Once files are verified and a certificate generated, all the information is secured. So I could see this for contracts, this data notarization to authorize that this indeed is the right contract that would be signed by, uh, it's just phenomenal, this whole idea of building all of this on the XRPL. Yeah. And, and it works this, with the Zoom wallet. Yeah, and this is what's so impressive about this space. Uh, and looking for, again, real world utility. So imagine, uh, it wasn't that long ago with DocuSign that DocuSign wasn't um, acceptable, accepted 
as a legal signature, right? It took a lot uh, until uh, the DocuSign, the e-sign, was uh, considered a a uh, verified and legal uh, way to sign documents, right? That would hold up in court, I should say. And so I think we're going to start seeing, even like right now with the smart contracts and blockchain, uh, although you can track the beginning, <laughs> the beginning uh, stages of of a, of a contract through a, you know, a smart contract and you can see all the terms, you can see all of that. It's, you know, I believe it's still not uh, legally binding, you know? And so we're starting something like this with this stamp like this will then once you can get the, the legal certification on that, I mean, this is just the beginning. Are you down with OTC? Please like subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.